Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. Happy day to all of you, and uh, so good to see you, and uh, thank you for this opportunity to, uh, to serve you. Um, also wish to extend greetings to our online audience from uh, the congregation here gathered, and uh, I hope you uh, enjoy our, our service. I need to pass along a safety note real quick. Anybody that was at Calvin's birthday party uh, Friday, it was Friday, right? And uh, Calvin uh, ended up being positive for COVID, and right now he's at the hospital. And so if you are a person who attended the birthday party, we'd ask you to step out into the narthex and grab a mask and mask up. Okay. At this point, we're going to pass the peace. Let's all uh, jump up and shake hands and say howdy to your neighbors. And uh, it's musical chairs when the music ends. Uh, everybody head for their seats. As you return to your seats, uh, we're going to stand and sing number 572, Take Time to Be Holy. Are we standing and singing?
All righty, everybody be seated, please. Let's uh, talk about some events here real quick. Uh, yesterday was the walk to end Alzheimer's. Glenda, are you in here? Alzheimer's, yes. Yes, you want to tell us about that? Forty-seven people. Wow, that's great. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> On the uh, back of your bulletin are uh, the uh, announcements for the week, and uh, they start with today. After uh, the service today at eleven o'clock, uh, we'll be having disciples bell rehearsal uh, Sunday. Uh, this afternoon at 5 p.m., the uh, youth planning meeting is going to happen. John, do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, we're going to uh, meet uh, here at the uh, Silas Hall at 5 p.m. We're going to have pizza and some drinks, and we're going to talk about what we're going to do uh, this upcoming year. Uh, also, Paul Pangano is coming up in the uh, registration. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The Disciples Men's Fellowship is meeting uh, tomorrow night at a half six, six thirty, and uh, Jim Creekmore is providing the vittles and has already told me he does not want to share anything about it. So there, Jim. Um, so uh, the men of the fellowship are invited to and reminded of the uh, Disciples Men Fellowship. 6.30, which will be uh, downstairs in the fellowship hall. Uh, the lunch bunch is meeting at El Lorito on South 70th Street. That's uh, out towards the Guidance Center. And uh, at 11.30 on Tuesday, our chancel uh, uh, choir rehearsal is at 4 p.m. on Tuesday. Uh, Betty, are you here? So uh, the Crazy Crafters are meeting every Thursday at 10.00 over here in the parlor and uh, so if you are a crafter who is not yet crazy or declares to be 10 a.m. Uh, every Thursday over here and uh, that'll be uh, uh, September 21st Thursday also the book club meets on every third Thursday of the month at 2 p.m. in the chapel so that is this Thursday at 2 p.m. and uh, then next Sunday, uh, we'll have an elders meeting at 11 a.m. after the service. And uh, then I also want to bring up that uh, Noreen Bella, who joined our uh, congregation last week, her contact information has been published in the, uh, in the uh, newsletter. So uh, if you want to reach out to her and uh, uh, make more noise in her life, that, inf <laughs> that, uh, that information is there. Um, concerns that we have within the congregation. Uh, John, is that you back there in the back somewhere? Any of John Foster, John and Debbie Foster's grandson, uh, Warren John Upchurch, has uh, uh, cancer. And on Facebook, there is a uh, page called Warren the Warrior. If you want to go there and look now, when I went and looked for that, there were two of them. And the most recent one, which has to do with uh, his current condition, has uh, some gold in the profile picture. And it says, I go gold for Warren John Upchurch. And there are photos and updates which can be found there. I encourage you to keep John and Debbie and uh, uh, their grandson in your lifted thoughts uh, through the week. Also, the Maxi family continues to uh, uh, need our
prayer and concern uh, going forward. Two other things is uh, Calvin, we now know, has come down with uh, uh, COVID. He's uh, in the hospital. Please keep him in your lifted, thought, lifted thoughts. And for anybody who has not yet seen the affliction that has fallen, fallen upon our good Reverend Dr. Robinson, uh, you're in my prayers today, and I hope uh, <laughs> uh, I hope uh, you all will uh, keep him in there as well. Is there any other announcements? Uh, how about birthdays, anniversaries, things like that in the congregation? Yes, ma'am. Tuesday is my 60th birthday. Yay. Yay. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm joining the club, Brad. There you go. Yeah, we're in. That means college for free for you. Yes, ma'am. We're about to celebrate our 40th wedding anniversary last Sunday. Ooh. Yay. Happy good anniversary. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Jim and I celebrated our 56 yesterday. Wow. 56 years. You're a patient and tolerant woman. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Just right before I have my great grandchild, she is responding to treatment for cancer. Tim. Thank you for the effort. Yes. Next Saturday, Trace would be swimming a mile in Beaver Lake. Wow. wow. <laughs> I hope he swims towards the dam because it's downhill. Now. Okay. All right. All right. Well, well, well. Thank you. Anybody else? Beloved, as we go to our call to worship, I want to first take the opportunity to thank you for your confidence in me as a minister. And uh, I just really am honored and humbled to be standing in this place with you and this congregation. You are wonderful people. I brag on you all all the time. So, you know, I said, uh, this is a great, great combination. Somebody said, knock on wood. I said, okay, I will. But anyway, on behalf of my wife and I, we want to thank you. And then uh, if you see me wearing dark glasses and what Brad was alluding to is I have a uh, very weak immune system that occasionally allows things to happen within my body. And as God would have it, I got a lymph node irritation about two days ago that caused my eye to swell. So if you get close to me and you see me, it looks worse than it is, because I'm not that good looking anyway. <laughs> but if you see it, don't be alarmed. And if you see me wearing these, it's not because I'm doing a Stevie Wonder impression. <laughs> it's because I don't want to frighten you. So that's what that is, but we'll get through this service. In fact, uh, Carl, I took a lesson from Carl, and I did my sermon in larger print today, Carl. I thought about you, my friend. Yeah, I mean that with love. Let's stand as we go to our call to worship today. Your printed bulletin. We have a lot to thank God for as we come to worship. Be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways. When they carry out their wicked schemes. Let us go now to the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our songs shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Lord God of both heaven and earth, we present ourselves before you in your holy and divine presence this morning 
It was your tender loving mercies that kept us all night long, all week long. Came by, you woke us up this morning, and you brought us to this place, this place we call our praying ground, this place our house of worship. Please remember and re remove anything that would prevent us from having a God experience today. We desire to hear you and to see you and to feel you in this service through our music, through the fellowship we enjoy, and through the sermon. We bring our petitions to lay before you on behalf of others on this holy altar. We come not just for ourselves, but for our friends and for our families and those whose names that we have heard being called. We pray, Lord, for Tim's granddaughter. We continue to hear of her struggles, and we are grateful for a pray praying grandfather. We pray for Alan Maxey and his family. We remember them today. We remember John and Debbie, and we remember their grandson. Warden, Lord, as you bless him and touch him. We come now on behalf of Calvin, who's been stricken with COVID. You know each and every one of them, Lord, and please don't let me forget any name now. We remember the poor victims of the horrific earthquake in Morocco and the tremendous loss of life in the flood in Libya. We pray for America. Please let peace, love, and unity replace division, hatred, and selfishness. We pray for First Christian Church Congregation, Lord, and all that you have in store for us. And we ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, taught us that when we pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading for today comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. This is uh, in page 583 of your pew Bibles, if you wish to follow along. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. 
They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. <clears throat> this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you will, pull out your hymnals. And after that scripture, we're going to sing On Eagle's Wings. And just a reminder, verse 1, and then the refrain, and then verse 2, 3, and 4 is on the second page with refrains in between. So sing with me. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Diana. And thank you, First Christian. As always, these are messages with you in mind. I want to talk to you today from a very powerful passage of Scripture found in Isaiah that many of you have heard before. I want to talk to you just a little bit about waiting on the Lord. Here we find ourselves in transition, we find ourselves waiting, and we tend to get in a hurry, so let us listen to what Isaiah has to say today. The question I want to ask you, and one that I already know the answer to, has anyone here ever had to wait? Does anyone particularly like waiting? Who among us does not know the frustrating experience of what it means to wait? 
Have you ever walked into a public place and been told, take a number, sit down, and wait? How many of you remember not too long ago going into a Walmart? You had only one or two items and you rushed to the checkout counter only to find the person in front of you with 99 items and you had to wait. Thank God for self-checkout. Have you ever had an all-day layover in an airport waiting for a flight that will only last a couple of hours and you had to just sit there all day and wait and wait and wait. Have you ever been in a hospital, hospital waiting room, hoping, waiting and praying, biting your nails while someone you love is in the exam room or operating room and all you can do is just wait. For many of us, life is one big waiting room. Most people I know do not do waiting well. My wife will tell you that I'm at the top of that list. I've told you that before. I have no patience when it comes to waiting. I admit that not having patience is one of my many shortcomings. And I've been this way ever since I was in the National Guard. I was in basic training at a place called Fort Ord, California. And every morning I was roused from my bunk between the ungodly hours of four and five o'clock in the morning, made to put on my uniform as quickly as I could, literally run to the mess hall for breakfast only to find myself standing in a long line just waiting and they had a word for that. They called it, hurry up and wait. And I swore then that if possible for the rest of my life, I would avoid standing in long lines, but I seem to have a talent for always getting in the wrong line. I've learned that in life, it doesn't pay to get in a hurry. I have learn that there are times when you just have to wait. There are places where you will not just go in and come right out in five minutes. There are situations where we just have to hurry up and wait. Have I witnessed? And when I think about all the frustrating experiences when I've had to wait I must reverently confess that the most frustrating of all my experiences are the ones when I found myself waiting on the Lord. May I be honest? And I don't mean any harm, I don't mean any disrespect. We are told all throughout the Bible that we should trust in the Lord, hope in the Lord, wait on the Lord. In Psalm 27, it says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. In Psalm 37, 34, it says, wait on the Lord and keep his ways. Psalm 33 and 20 declares, let your mercy be upon us as we wait for you. And then in 37 and 7 of Psalms, it says, those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And then in Psalm 62, 5, it says, My soul waits silently for God. There are many scriptures that talk about hoping, trusting, and waiting. But of all the texts in the Bible that speaks to our hearts about waiting on God, th this is it. This, this, this one in Isaiah is the one that speaks the loudest. Isaiah chapter 40 tells us that if we wait on the Lord, 
We will renew our strength. We shall mount up with wings as eagles. We shall run and not be weary. And we will run and not faint. That's a promise. But there's only one issue, beloved, that I have with all this waiting. And that is, waiting on the Lord ain't easy. And excuse my ain't. <laughs> I don't think God will strike me down for being honest. He, he knows that I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. There's a reason that Christians are always saying, the Lord may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. It is because waiting on God is not easy. That's the reason we call him an on-time God. And that is because he operates on his time, and guess what? Not ours. That's the reason we say God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And that is because life is not always fair. But yet we are told to wait on God, the Lord, anyway, because he is always good. In this text... It is evident that Isaiah has learned how to wait on God. And if you and I are ever going to grow in the faith, if we are ever going to realize our full potential <coughs> that <coughs> God has placed inside of us, it's not going to happen by hurrying God. We have got to learn how to wait. We pray hurry up prayers, looking for a hurry up answer and a hurry up blessing. We put a stopwatch on God and clock how long it takes God to come by here. We love to sing Jesus is on the main line like he is some cosmic telephone operator just waiting online to, for us to call him up to fill our order. You can't hurry the creator of the universe. You can't put God on a time clock. I found that the best thing that God can do for me sometimes is just make me hurry up and wait. The greatest periods of growth in my life have been when God has withheld his blessings until I was able to handle them. If God gave us everything we asked for or did everything we wanted him to do when we wanted him to do it and how we wanted him to do it, he would only hear from some of us every now and then. God doesn't want us to play him cheap so that we don't take him for granted so that we learn to appreciate him, he makes us wait. These are lessons that we learn by waiting, and they're found here in this passage. This is what he says. Haven't you known, haven't you heard, that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, Faineth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. And that lesson of waiting on God really helps us to understand, first of all, the nature of who God is. Last week, we looked at the mysterious ways of God, and they are strange and mysterious. This passage points to his mysterious nature. What Isaiah is saying in today's vernacular is that God is not like us. Don't you know, haven't you heard, that God is everlasting? That means that he is omnipresent. God occupies all time and space. That means there has never been a time when God was not. And there has never been a place where God has not been present. So when we are waiting on him to come here, guess what? He's already here. He's everlasting. He's always been there. 
There's no place you can send him. And by the way, there's no place you can hide from him. Because the creator of the ends of the earth is already where we need him to be. We may not recognize that he is there, but believe me, he's always there, especially when we need him most. He's the creator of the ends of the earth. He's not only there where we need him, but he's there with absolute ultimate power, which means that he is omnipotent. He has all power. He is all power. He created the universe and everything in it, including you and me. He's never made a mouth he could not feed. He never made a body he couldn't clothe, a heart he could not fix, or a mind that he could not regulate. He is the creator of the universe. He is there, and he's there with power. And while he is where we need him to be, he does not get tired, he does not faint, he doesn't get weary, he doesn't wear out, he cannot exhaust the Lord, you can't worry the Lord like some of us think. He's not like that. But what kind of God would God be if he showed up and while he was there, even with all this power, he did not know what to do for us or how to do what we need done? What if he did not understand? What if he didn't know us? What if he did not understand our circumstances or how to fix our dilemma or how to solve our problem. But while we are waiting on him, he is aware that we are waiting. Isaiah says, there's no searching of his understanding, which means that he is not only omnipotent and he's everywhere all the time in every place. He's not only omniscient, he's not only uh, got all power, but he's also omniscient. He knows everything about everything. There is nothing new to him. You can't surprise him. He knows everything about us from the womb to the tomb. He's omnipotent. He is omnipotent and he's omniscient. But there is something else Isaiah says. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no power, he increases strength. Even the youth, even the young people shall faint and grow weary, and the youth and young men shall utterly fall. So the other lesson, the second lesson is waiting on God causes us to really come to grips with what we are. I don't know how you feel about it, but as Isaiah is the one who told us in his writings, that all our righteousness is as a filthy rag. And now he's telling us that we are weak, we are feeble, and that even the best of us, no matter how young, no matter how healthy, no matter how well you take care of yourself, and I hope that you do, will become faint, will become weary. I hate to tell you this, especially young people, but it's true. Even on your best day, you can still be sick enough to die. I saw it every day by being a chaplain at Mercy. Patients would come in with minor health issues, but never walk out. If you have get around power today, it's only because God gives you the power to get around. If you can maneuver on your own without a cane, wheelchair, a CNI dog, it's only because of God. If you have vision in your eyes, and, I, and I'm working on that, <laughs> or sound in your ears, and clothed in your right mind, it is only because of the goodness of God who gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. 
He's the one who increases your strength. Isaiah's telling us that even young people get faint and grow weary. Even young people, they get tired. Even young people get sick. Young people can utterly fall. That, that's why you need to wait on the Lord, young folk. Let me give our young people a bit of advice, and you can take this home and give it to your children and grandchildren and nieces and nephews. And it comes from an old man named Solomon who was the third king of Israel. This is what he says over there in his writings. He says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth before, and I'm paraphrasing, you start falling apart. <laughs> you know, if you all were shouting church, you'd be saying amen right now. Before your time, limbs grow old and still. Before your teeth start falling out. Before your vision grows dim. Before your steps grow short. Before your get up and go has gotten up and gone. Find it now. Please don't wait until you get old. You may not live to get old. Don't wait until you get ready. Don't put God on hold because it is God <coughs> who is holding you. But then the last thing that Isaiah wants us to know is that there are benefits that come with being patient and waiting on God. Although waiting is not easy, waiting teaches us that, there, that we are totally dependent on God. And all of our help comes from him. This is, this is what he says. All those other things, but, and that but changes everything I just said before that. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He didn't say might. They will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run, not be weary. They will walk and not faint. This is the last thing. Waiting on God teaches us to appreciate the benefits of trusting and waiting on him. He gives us eagle wings. Thank you for that, for that hymn. Having eagle wings means that waiting gives us the strength to rise above. Eagles don't fly into the face of the storm. They soar safely above the storm. There are some storms in this life that will come to us. But if you are a child of God, he does not want us hindered by storms. He gives us wings of faith that help us roar above whatever storm we happen to be going through. But then because we are human, we are human, because we are finite, because we are weak and feeble, because we faint, we grow weary, we get tired, we wear out, we give out, we give up, we quit, we fall down, we wait to drop out of the race, it's then that he gives us power to run on just a little while longer. Have you ever felt like giving up? But then the Lord just whispers in your ear, the Holy Spirit blows on you. And we run until we cannot run any longer. Then we walk by faith and not by sight. I hadn't planned to say this, but it just came to me that when I pastored Ebenezer, Baptist Church in Atchison, Kansas, a little older lady called me to her house one day and she said, young man, we love you and we understand what you're trying to do. You're a cheerleader for us and you're always trying to get us to do more than we're able to do. But let me tell you something. She said, we're not sitting there because we're lazy. She said, we're not sitting there because we don't want to do. We have worn out. We have not rusted out. We have worn out. She said, that pulpit that you preach from every Sunday, some of us went up and down the streets selling pieces of coal for a nickel. 
and we bought that pulpit. So that is a lesson from learning. When we can no longer fly, no longer run, no longer walk, we just do this. Wave your hands and say, thank you, Lord. It was all worth the wait. Job said it like this, and then I'm through. I will wait until my change comes. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of waiting. Amen. Our communion hymn is, uh, let us break the hymn together, number 1967, there was a local artist named Ron Watson who did all of this interior design. He designed this table. He did all of this artwork. He did all of this metal stippling. He built this. From our original sanctuary came these light fixtures over your head, the rosetta. And then came, the de then came the day when we commissioned and we dedicated this, this sanctuary, this facility, and this campus in the service of the Lord as believers in Christ. As we come to the table today, please come from the outside aisles partake of the elements, return to your pews through the inside aisles. If there is anybody who wishes to be served at your seat, uh, we have a deacon who will come serve you. This table is open to all, and all means all. Through the observance of communion, individuals are invited to acknowledge their faults, and their sins to remember the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, to remember their baptism, to give thanks for God's redeeming love. 
because disciples believe that the invitation to the table comes from Jesus Christ. Communion is open to all who confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, regardless of their denomination or affiliation. Communion is the symbolic presence of Jesus within our gathered community. Please come forward. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread. He gave to them and said, This is my body, which is for you to do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup saying the cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, for whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. the beautiful developments in our uh, service has been uh, what I just accidentally denied you and that was uh, no I uh, I, uh, I was saying kind words about uh, that moment of reflection and meditation going into communion 
between the good pastor and the, and the music. And thank you all for indulging me. God, we offer ourselves to thee to build with us and to do with us as thou wilt. Relieve us of the bondage of self that we may better do thy will. Take away our difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those we would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. Creator, we are now willing that you should have all of us, good and bad. We pray that you now remove from us every single defect of character which stands in the way of our usefulness to you and to our fellows. Grant us strength as we go out from this place to do your bidding. Amen. It is a privilege and honor to be considered a member of the household of faith. And at this time, as we do at the conclusion of every worship service, we extend the invitation, which is the invitation to come join with our family. To God come and be a part of a great, great experience here at First Christian with some wonderful, wonderful, caring, loving people. You're here, you may come.
to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great exceeding joy. To the only wise Savior be glory, power, and authority from Jesus Christ our Lord before, before all ages now, forever. Amen. Amen.